She never applied for the uh, lien on her car, so we financed her. I even tried to entice her with, hey, Denise, yeah. <laughs> I have a second key and remote for you. He says she's past due. Mm -hmm. They say they never received the title, but I can't repossess it because we don't actually own the car because she has the title, so everyone's cool but us. Someone has been running a train on me for seven months. Wait, I didn't say that right. Somebody has been scamming me for seven months. Actually, they are running a train on me. In today's video, I am getting completely by both a subprime bank and a buyer. I have been completely scammed for near eight months now. And I think for the first time ever, I'm gonna actually have to repossess a vehicle. And in today's video, I'm gonna explain to you what happened, how I didn't see it coming, and what is going on so it doesn't happen to you and how you can protect yourself. Man, I hate subprime financing and I hate working with subprime buyers. It is so difficult. This scenario has been a nightmare for far too long. My name is Craig from Flying Wheels. Let's get going. Pardon the swear words, I am extremely frustrated because the subprime lender, my bank that I financed a customer for and the customer lied to me, has been holding $40,000 from me for quite some time now on an $18,000 vehicle. I'm gonna say that again. I financed a customer for $18,000. They lied to me, they cheated me, and I think they're stealing from me, and the bank not only held that $18,000, they're actually holding every other car that I've financed since totaling a grand total of $40,000. And in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through the entire scenario because by the end, I think we're gonna to have to repossess this car. It has been going on for way, way too long. I've never had to repossess a car before. I don't even know how to repossess a car. I own a small car dealership. You can see it right here. Like, small car lot, whatever you guys wanna call it. And I do subprime financing. What is subprime financing? Well, when a buyer has low credit, it, it can happen to the best of us. Anybody could have low credit, they can get themselves in a bad situation. Just. Stereotypically speaking though, a lot of subprime buyers have low credit for a reason, a bad decision or another. And they're sometimes difficult to work with and tend to be less trustworthy, meaning I can sometimes get myself into a less trustworthy situation with a subprime buyer than like a top tier buyer. And that's what happened in this situation. A woman eight months ago tried to finance an expedition that I had for far too long. And typically we require 20% down payment on subprime financing. So let's say the vehicle was 20,000, she's required to have 4,000. Well, I had the car too long and she qualified for 10% down, which would have been 2,000. I think it was an $18,000 car, so 1,800 down. Against all policy, I do not sell cars for 10% down on subprime financing. But like I said, I've had the car for too long. I was looking forward to getting rid of it. She saw my situation and I just accepted it. Then come to find out after she took the vehicle, she had been loan shopping. Like she refinanced her house and got a second vehicle and like financed this vehicle all on the same exact day, telling me that this was very intentional because it doesn't all hit your credit score in one day. It doesn't like the credit bureaus don't all hit in one day. So she took the vehicle, drove way, way, way up into Maine. I'm in New Hampshire before I even found out it happened. The bank called me and said, hey, we're calling back that loan, get the vehicle or redo the terms. I had to read through the terms, cost me an additional $500 because she didn't have it. So I ate the 500. Come to find out there is more of a scam going on eight months in the making. She kept the title, never registered the car. She owns the vehicle now. I don't have a lien on it. The bank doesn't have a lien on it. The bank wants either the money or the vehicle, which I, they don't even want the vehicle anymore because apparently the customer stopped paying for it. So. We have to get to the bottom of this entire situation and I'm gonna just kind of jump right into it. Lauren has been taking care of all this stuff for me, my office manager. We're gonna go back and forth, tell you the story and things that you should watch out for when financing subprime buyers and also what it's like working with subprime financing banks too because they are absolutely taking advantage of me in this situation. Let's keep moving. Recently, made a video about a woman that I wouldn't call her a scammer, although I think she knew what she was doing. She's the one that like applied for multiple auto loans or refinanced her house on the same day that she applied yeah. for an auto loan or something. She's like a phase one scammer. Phase one scammer, yeah. but she knew what she was up to. Yeah. She like was a game player. That's what I was, she played the game. So anyway, that video has come and gone. Well, it's been months, like six months have gone by, June. So seven or eight months have gone by. And this woman, I guess has never, she never applied for the uh, lien on her car. So we financed her and we like forgave some stuff and all kinds of like, we kind of like extended ourselves a little bit to help her out. 
did some extra repairs for her. Well, it's been eight months and I just did another loan with the bank that we did the original loan with her for. Gave them their car. They're good, they're off, they're driving around, they've been out for a week. Well, I haven't been funded yet. I haven't gotten the money yet. I found out just today that that woman never actually applied for her title, the lien on her title. So the bank never got their title. So the woman has the title, which means she could sell it, collect the cash and run. And the bank won't pay us on the new car because they never received the title on her car. So I now have two people out there driving around in cars, the Escalade person, they're, they're all good, but we're not gonna get paid on it until we figure this out. So I'm gonna call her and figure out what's going on. I said guaranteed she's not gonna pick up. She dodged my calls for months. I even tried to entice her with, hey, Denise, yeah. <laughs> I have a second key and remote for you. Dangling it, dangling that carrot. The one of the fees Yeah, like 500 her. bucks. Yeah. I waved 500 bucks yeah. for her. What's her number? Let me look at it so people don't call her, please. <laughs> Four and nine. Stop saying oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just give me the last four digits. Two seconds later. Did you ever get a title for it? I got the thing you sent to me. I didn't get any title. I gave all my paperwork to the registration. They wanted me to have you call them if you don't mind, and then could you just call us and let us know what's going on? Yeah, I'll call. I tried earlier. Cool. Thanks for trying. Yeah. Sometimes the best scammers are the ones that answer the calls. Yeah, I guess so. So we will see. I'm curious to see how this pans out, but I can't believe the story's not over yet. She's past due, so what are the next steps that we have to take? Okay. Um, and then, so what happens with our funds on her our account? Because she's pa she's past due and she still doesn't have the title, but we're kind of being penalized because our funds are being held for it. Right. No, I'm trying to get clarification on that. Okay. All right. Now you, 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 when you talked to her, you said she passed the plane along to the town clerk, right? Yeah, I have, yeah, I have text messages saying that she gave the title to the town clerk with the title application. And then she told me that she called the state of Maine um, and they put like an inquiry in or something. Right. But I don't really know if that's true or not. So we've just, we've been kind of getting the runaround from her. How far past due is she? Right. How far past due is she? It's not coming up I'm in my email now, of course. Uh, as soon as I get home, I can give you a call back. Okay. So I, I can get into my laptop. No, 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 that's okay. Yeah, just give me a call back when you get, um, get a chance to look. Sure. All right, cool. I appreciate you. No problem, thank you. All right, bye. So that was our bank rep. He says she's past due. Mm -hmm. They say they never received the title. So she knows what she's up she to. She knows what she's doing. Yeah. Okay, she thanks knows. for getting getting there, figuring yeah. it out. A few days later. So unfortunately, it looks like we're gonna have to repossess a car. Someone behind me is far too excited for this <laughs> experience. And uh, we have to do some investigative work, some like private PI type things, yes. which I think you know, gonna I'm be- pretty, I'm pretty good at. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I need to turn the camera on for this. Um, we know where she works and it's a store that's pretty prominent like they're all over the place yeah. i'm not going to say what the store is i think we could find out like if you call from an anonymous number at like they're always hiring those are the mm -hmm. like oh i'm interested in the position um what are your hours what are your shifts that way we know what time the yeah. shifts are and if we get there towards the end of one shift and that person is not there then the second shift happens and that person will be there and then we can just grab the car get out of here yeah and if she doesn't show up, we know where she lives. That sounds so creepy, but yes. We yeah. Know. And then we had references for this purpose. Yes. We have references. So like son's name, other son's name, their addresses, because these things happen and you need to cover yourself. So we save these things for just such instances, which is why we ask for references and job letters. So Lauren is going to do some Facebook some stalking creeping. some Facebook creeping today <laughs> and then Friday today's Wednesday Friday we're gonna go up and I know she's looking forward to the adventure and we're gonna try to track this car down we and will. yank it and bring it home an hour and a half away yeah it's kind of fun I think it's gonna be a blast <laughs> <laughs> that's all for now the next day. Every once in a while, more often than not, Dave comes up with a great idea. So this expedition we have. We also sold a near identical expedition, which is the one we're going to repossess. We have a key fob for it. We don't have the key. And the fob battery is actually dead. I don't think we need the actual key. I think we need the transponder in the fob. 
to go take the one we're going to get this week. So Dave came up with the idea of let's remove the key out of the fob for this one and see how we can get this car started and if we can get this car started with maybe a dead battery in the transponder and without a key and see if it actually works, right? Yep. So did you remove the key? I removed the key that's in your shop. So there's no key in this? No key in all. All right, so let's see if it starts. I think it will. It communicates with the fob. Yes. Bingo. So it starts. Now let's try removing the battery and see if it will still recognize the transponder in the in the remote. Now we are going to attempt to start this car with no battery in the transponder. Typically when the battery is dead on the remote, which happens, you would place it right up to the engine start. Nothing. There's got to be an area for it. Oh, keep key not detected. No key detected. Hmm. Hold it right there. I bet there's a spot on this car that you insert the transponder. Look at that, right there. And we're gold. I'm going to jack this car right there. Perfect. Test done. Dave, that was genius. I am not going to show what you just wrote down, but can you please tell me what you have written down right there? Yeah, so I found the um, expedition owner's mm -hmm. place of work, her address, and her son's address. Wow. So, and I'm trying to look at her Facebook now. That was quick. To see, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're enjoying this far too much. Facebook FBI. <laughs> A few moments later. So I have some updates on the expedition, okay? I made some calls and Lauren made some calls and I feel like we have been scammed from the very, very start. Like remember, I, we told her we would take minimum 20% down payment and she kind of finagled us on a 10% down payment. So on like an, a $19,000 car, she gave us 2,000 down, which I never, ever, ever do. But we had that expedition so long, and I'm like, fine, let's move it. Then after we agreed on that, and we got her approved, we found out that she applied for a home equity line of credit at the same time. So she applied for two loans on the same day, which sounded like a coincidence. It wasn't, she knew what she was doing, so she, <laughs> If one posted before the other, she wouldn't have qualified for the loan on the vehicle. Then, after she took the car, that's when we found out in the bank said, hey, no, she has another loan out there. We can't qualify her anymore after we've already approved her. Things have changed. So she said, no, that's not it. Long story is a whole other video. So the bank never got their name on the title. That's odd that that didn't happen, but she knew like- She never turned in the title. She never turned the title in. So she, her son like was a car dealer or something and was like guiding her along the way on how to scam us. And now she won't even really contact us. And when she does, it's just a, I'm gonna find out more answers. It's short. I'm gonna find out more answers and get back to she doesn't. So I was planning on going to repossess the car tomorrow. I'm just gonna get it. We have the second set of keys. In the state of Maine, we have to give her a warning. So we have to actually oh, really? warn her that we're repossessing her car, yeah. Oh. The bank is useless because to them, they don't actually own it. So they have two loans of ours for other customers that they won't pay us on until they get either paid on the expedition back, refunded, or reimbursed, or they get the title. So they're basically holding two vehicle payments for us hostage while another customer is out driving around in a free car. So everyone's fine but us. Customers out driving around in an expedition, not paying for it. The bank doesn't care because they've gotten paid for seven months and now they're like, oh, Craig, we're not gonna give you any money until you pay us back for this car. So they're fine because they have two vehicles that they're, they haven't paid me on. So everyone's good but us. And then we say, all right, bank, go repossess it. And they say, it's not our car. We don't have a lien on it. So they're fine. So it's up to me, but I can't repossess it because we don't actually own the car because she has the title. So everyone's cool but us. So I wrote her a formal letter. It says, hey, Denise, we've tried to reach you many times for the past few months with very little success. It seems as though you've either, that either the state of Maine have not, it seems as though either you or the state of Maine have not yet perfected the lien in the name of Westlake Financial Services, which was required to be done upon registering your vehicle back in June. We've spoken with you several times regarding this matter. Last we spoke, you were in contact with the Maine DMV Title Bureau. That was several weeks ago and we have not yet to hear back from you. We've now been notified by Westlake Financial Services that not only have they not received a title with them listed as lien holder, but now you're behind on their payments as well. We've contacted you several times about this matter, and this is your formal notification that your vehicle is now qualified for re to be repossessed. The best way to handle this is to get us the title back that we provided to you so we can take care of it for you and both move along. I have solutions to help you, but please contact me right away so I can handle both the title and the bank issues for you. Thank you, Craig. I'm trying to help her. That's fair. I'm trying to help her 
and help me. I just started to hate people so much. Okay, so you have some updates. So I called Westlake Financial, the repo department. They basically said that in the state of New Hampshire, we're allowed to repo a car, but since she's in Maine, Maine says we can't. Uh, Westlake won't do anything because we're still the lien holders on it because they don't have a title and we're pretty much her biggest help. It's just, I, I gotta just, run around stuck. all day. We're I was gonna, on hold for- Run around from our reps, run around from the banks, run around yeah. from the state, just no one is helping. The next day. We have another update on the expedition. So we sent a certified letter yesterday, but today we got a call back from this woman that said that the town hall has had our title, her title, sitting on their mm. desk for six since months. Since June. Since June, because they missed a birthday. That sounds fishy to me, but she called you, right? Yeah, at 9 a.m. She called you at 9 a.m. to tell and you that. this is what she I said. want to believe it. That's what she sent me for her. Or like a proof of receipt. Oh, okay. But it's just a I don't number. know if I should put that. I mean, she gave us something. So maybe, maybe I'm anticipating being scammed. I think we are being scammed. But maybe it was sitting on someone's desk for six months and they never contacted anybody because her birthday wasn't written on it. A few minutes later. All right, I want to do an update on the expedition scam. Maybe scam, maybe not a scam Potential now. Scam? Potential I don't know. Maybe we were getting scammed. Maybe we don't. Maybe we weren't. So Lauren has been actively working on this for us. And what is happening so far? I forget where we left off because it's been a few weeks. We were eventually, we were going to go repossess this car. Yeah, I think I, that's where we left off. I had the truck and the trailer and the day we were going to go repossess yeah. this car. We still have the key in the yeah. box over there. Then we didn't because some dealers said maybe don't do that yet. Contacts and tow yards. We had to, Maine requires you to send a notice of repossession before and we you sent do it. it. We did send it. So we were going to repossess yeah. this car. We didn't because we had to send a notice. We did yeah. send her a notice. Then... Like the next day, didn't she coincidentally call us or something? No, I called her to see if she still had the title. Mm -hmm. But she said it was at the town, town office. And then the next day after we talked to her, she got the letter that we sent for the repossession. Right. Yeah. Oh, didn't she send us a receipt confirmation yeah. that... Okay, so this is what happened. So I sent the certified letter to her that we were going to repossess the car mm -hmm. instead of going to repossess the car right away. The same day, maybe you reached out or whatever. I think, yeah. I think I we gave her like one last chance chance to be like, okay. hey, we need to do this. And like a text, like, hey, we're gonna have to repossess this car. The next day, we got the receipt that yep. the title has been processed. Yep. It was left community. on somebody's desk at the town hall. I'm gonna put in quotation marks. Yeah. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. I don't know. Supposedly. But that day, it was found. Yeah. And a date of birth was not put on the title application, is what we were told, right? Yeah. And that's why it sat on yeah. someone's desk at the town hall for seven months. Yeah. So it's processed and we got a receipt saying that it was sent over to the state. Mm -hmm. It has been weeks that have gone by. A rep for the bank quit. Like, yeah. We got a new rep. <laughs> we got a new rep because they're always trying to sell you on a new, hey, I'm your new rep. All you have to do is fill out a form. He didn't know what he was signing up for. No. So we're like, oh, all right, good. Because we have quite the headache on our hands. That guy quit. Yeah. Like, I think we actually got and him to quit all of Westlake. And he blocked my number. <laughs> he blocked your number. <laughs> so that, that guy's out. Yeah. Then uh, we sent over the confirmation. It's been weeks. And then uh, just recently we got in touch with the DMV yeah. that sent us this email. So our new rep called and they're like, hey, the bank is holding way more money than they should be. I'm gonna try to get some released. It hasn't been released yet. But we got this email from the main division of motor vehicles that says the title has been processed and mailed to Westlake Financial. So it is officially title on its way to Westlake. It is now February, it was from June, so June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February. It's been nine months that we have not been getting scammed. Yeah. Right, so that's our update. Stay tuned because in this next segment we will find out if we did or did not get paid. So we have since sold three cars yeah. through the bank and they didn't pay us on any of them. No, they held our funds. They held all three, so like 40, 50 grand worth of funds they've held on us and uh, all because of this one person's mm -hmm. $18,000 car. Yeah. And they want us to go take the car back and to be quite honest with you, the entire market has changed since she bought it nine mm -hmm. months ago. So that truck is worth way less. And she, here's the other thing. And I kept saying like, I feel like I'm getting scammed. I feel like I'm getting scammed, but she was a nice old woman that works at mm -hmm. a or that yeah. I won't name. And uh, generally speaking, <laughs> <laughs> Um, now I lost track of what I was saying. We require 20% down. Yeah. Minimum 
twenty percent. She's Always. like, oh, I only have eighteen hundred dollars, or Dude. that's that'd be ten percent. Yeah, whatever. I only have ten percent, eighteen hundred dollars. So I'm like, all right, we've had this expedition a while. Let it go. So we only took ten percent, which is like nothing, and yeah. the car is worth way less than that ten percent now. So we got to get out of this thing. Yeah. I want my money. I don't want the car because then we have nine months of added mileage to it, mm-hmm. nine months of wear and tear to it, and depreciation for nine months, mm-hmm. which is significant. So it would yeah. have cost us thousands of dollars. Mm-hmm. So next segment of this video with our fingers crossed, we're going to get our money on two or three cars or whatever that, yeah. that we haven't been paid, like th- tens of thousands of dollars, yeah. hopefully. A few days later. So we were able to track down that title and your funds are being released today. All of it? All of it. How much was held? Uh, it's a pretty significant amount. Hold on one second. I know. Just under $29,000. Whoa, nice. All right, thank you for that. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thanks for getting it done. Yeah, no worries. Thank Let me know you. if there's anything else you need. Thanks. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. So for an $18,000 car, they held $29,000 yeah. of our money. Wow. That's what it's like financing subprime financers with a subprime bank. That's insane. And it's been, how long have they held it? Three months? It was Christmas. Yeah. So it was before Christmas. Yeah, right before Christmas. And now it's... End of February. Done. Over with. Completed. We can send Denise her keys. That lady. We can send that lady her keys. I don't know if I want to. (laughs) Thanks for getting it done. Hey, Lauren. Yeah. So we recently got paid on that expedition. Denise's expedition. Apparently the title showed up. Yeah. To be honest with you guys, we already knew this. Now we're recapping it. We're, what is it called? Reenacting it (laughs) for you. So they did get the title, finally. And they released the funds. Can you add these two numbers together for me? Here's how much the subprime financing bank was holding for us. Now, what did did we loan out the car for? Like 18,000 or something? Yeah, somewhere in June. They owned it for $18,000 back in June. It's now March, like next week. Yeah. $12,461.09 was being held. That was the Cadillac, I think you sold or something. So like they held money on an entire car. More than one And then a second car yeah. for 165189 which brings it to a grand total of how much money were they keeping from us? $29,032.98. So $29,000 they were hanging on to yeah. over an $18,000 loan that was being paid. She yeah. was 30 days late. It wasn't like she was three, four months late. Yeah, exactly. And they were calling us incessantly, if that's the right word. But we're officially paid. And the big question is, going back to June, when she first came in and said, I only have $1,800 to put down, yeah. which is half, 50% of what we would normally require. It's only 10%, not 20%. Mm-hmm. And then she said her son is a car dealer and like had all those requirements. Yeah. And yeah. then like double dipped on loan applications. Yeah. She remortgaged her house the same day that she applied for our loan. So she got approved for both. Then and she didn't we, tell us about She didn't tell that. us about it. Then we had to increase our fee, how much we pay the bank because she did that to make the loan happen because she already had the car and she was three hours away. Yeah. Then the title never showed up. So my question is number one, we got completely taken advantage of by the bank. Yep. The subprime bank holding thirty thousand dollars for at least two months. That was over two months. Yeah, at least uh, two months. Yeah. It was before Christmas vacation. Yeah. So the bank held thirty thousand dollars on us for two months, and we took a loss. We we had to sell the car for less because of the bank's fees, mm-hmm. and then all the hoops and time you jumped through. Yeah. We got a new rep. The poor guy walked into something he didn't even know what <laughs> he was walking into. Yeah. And then we finally, the title showed up on somebody's desk. So do you think in hindsight we were scammed or this just worked out really poorly? Me personally, yeah. I think it was a partial scam. I think she did know what she was doing and she didn't want for some reason go turn the title in. I don't know why she wouldn't want to do that, but it just seems weird that everything showed up when we started saying like, we need to take action on this car. They're holding our money. Then all of a sudden everything all of a sudden worked out. I think that's kind of... I hope we talked about the repo letter. I hope I, I don't know. I don't know if we ever talked about it, but she called really upset and Lauren had some words. Don't mess with Lauren. <laughs> so Lauren, you saw the fury of Lauren, or at least I did with this person. Yeah. Uh, I think she played us. I think, I think the bank played us and I think she played us. Yeah. I think we got two timed yeah. by this situation. Yeah. So learning lesson for us, learning lesson for you guys when you watch these videos, there's just so many scams to look out for. And yeah. Everyone's out to get you. That's why I always say CYA, cover your butt, because nobody cares about. No. Everybody cares about numero uno, no. taking care of themselves at the dealer's expense. Yeah, right? exactly. 30 grand, that's a lot of money. 
That, and it was originally even more than that. Remember, they held on three cars. They did, and then they finally they released, released one. one because they realized they probably realized it was ridiculous yeah, what they were they're doing. They're holding like forty five thousand yeah, dollars on an eighteen thousand yeah. dollar car. Once I sent the receipt of her going to the town hall, they released with the first. The, they sessions. released one car. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It, and unfortunately, our hands are tied because we either don't sell a car, like we yeah. sold that twenty thousand dollar van through this bank yeah. yesterday. Yeah. And without them, we may not have sold it. Exactly. So we're, our hands are tied. We either like go with the requirements of the bank and we let them step on us, or we don't and then we don't sell. Yeah, we're like kind of at the mercy of them, and I we feel like the they know that. They they do know that. Yeah. 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 Well, that's a bummer. But the situation's over with, and we've officially gotten paid. I'd love to know what you guys think. Did we get scammed by the bank, by the customer, or did this just all not work out well until the very, very end? Thanks for following along in these journeys. Wasn't quite the Melvin Johnson video, no. but it was still a story, to yeah. say the least. I'll see you guys all later. Adios.